Welcome to Knife Thoughts. This video is going to be my review of this knife, and this is the Civivi Sendi by Ben Peterson. And so this is a new knife designed by Ben Peterson of NAFSCO and made by Civivi. And so these are kind of two things coming together that I, uh, you know, enjoy and have done a good number of videos on, which is Civivi knives. I have done lots and lots of videos on Civivi knives. Um, I really like them and they are made uh, really well and really consistently. And then also knives des designed by Ben Peterson. Um, I originally reviewed the Banter, his first design, um, thanks to his uh, good natured response to some criticism that I made on Reddit about it. And since then, I've reviewed, I think, all of his designs, except for uh, the recent fixed blade, which I just didn't get my hands on um, when they came out, but plan to at some point. Uh, so I enjoy reviewing knives from Civivi and designed by Ben Peterson. And when I saw that this knife was coming out, I actually uh, saw it originally at Blade Show in 2023. Now, at that time, this was to be called the Cedar. And so there's a whole backstory on that name um, that I encourage you to check out. I will put a link in the video here uh, from Ben himself, a really great write-up and, and also some videos uh, he's done about that and about the process and why the name was changed. Um, but kind of the, the short answer for why the name was changed to the Sendi is because there was a trademark issue of some sort. And so he just decided to send it and call it the Sendi. And so uh, the idea is that this is a knife that you can carry, you know, if you are in college and, and uh, you know, not be too um, <laughs> shocking if you pull it out and use it to, you know, put what I call a speed hole in your coffee. Um, when I was in college, that was one of my most common uses of my knives. Um, you put a, a bigger hole at the back uh, so that you can drink it faster, basically. Um, you know, but it wouldn't be too shocking being a relatively small and kind of friendly looking knife. Uh, but then that you can take on your adventures also. And I think that that's true for someone in, you know, a professional environment, you know, uh, an office or something where you don't want to have a big, you know, scary knife of of some sort. Um, but you want to have a knife that you can have at work, be pretty okay, you know, both legally and aesthetically in a lot of places, but then be able to, you know, take camping on the weekend and do pretty much everything you need to or hiking and, uh, and just send it, have it with you. And so um, that's the idea behind the Sendy here. And uh, so when Savivi asked if I would be interested in reviewing it, I said, definitely, you know, I'd love to. And uh, to be completely honest with it being a relatively small knife, I do tend to prefer a little bit larger of a knife for carry for my modern knife because I often carry a traditional knife and they are, you know, sometimes in this kind of same size range. So I'll talk more about this knife and the relation to the Sandy. Well, there's not much of a relation, but kind of an idea that I have. Uh, but you can see that a GEC 15 is kind of close in size to the Sandy, and I often carry a, a pocket knife, a traditional pocket knife like that also. Um, so I wasn't sure, you know, how much I would like this knife. I knew that it would be made well and designed well, uh, but how how it would fit into my needs. And I just... I got it, put it in my pocket, wanted to, you know, give it a shot, carry and use it some to get my thoughts on it. And I just kept putting it in my pocket. I got to tell you, I, I just kept um, not really feeling like I needed to, to have a different modern knife with me. Um, enjoying the knife, enjoying carrying it, um, and enjoying the, the action, the, the flipping action. Um, and I ended up carrying it a lot and using it a lot. Uh, including on a trip, you know, some outdoor stuff um, around the house and uh, even did a little prying when uh, the, the latch for our chicken coop 
was frozen shut. I used the blade to, to pry it open. Um, not that I recommend that, or I'm sure not that Ben or uh, Savivi recommends that, but it worked fine. <clears throat> um, so I did use this knife a good bit um, and really enjoyed it. And I think that the, there are a couple reasons for that. So first of all, it's super easy to carry. This knife has a really classic shape to the handle. It's what I would call kind of like a sleeve board shape. It's not exactly a sleeve board because of the inline flipper, um, but it has this rounded end, just like a lot of traditional knives, if I can find the one that I am thinking of. So you can see a similar rounded end to a GEC 78, or again, the GEC 15. Um, so, you know, you can have it in your pocket, put your hand in your pocket and get your phone or whatever you, else you carry in your pocket and not have it be, be you know, too uncomfortable. Um, whereas some knives, I, I do have that. Even uh, some, some knives that have been designed by Ben Peterson, uh, you can kind of sometimes feel this corner. Uh, it's not a huge deal. I typically like the handle designs, uh, but because this doesn't have that, you don't, you know, feel that that corner as much. Uh, it does have a deep carry pocket clip, and there's no markings on it, so it's kind of uh, low key, low low visibility if you want to be tactical about it. Uh, so it kind kind of looks like a pen clip. It's a little wide for a pen clip, but uh, it's it's pretty unobtrusive anyway. Um, and then <laughs> it's very ergonomic also because of this nice simple handle. Uh, so you know, I've got wide hands. I can get a full four finger grip on this, no no issue. And it's very comfortable. Like I say, I used this knife a good bit and found that it was very comfortable in the hand. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, contouring to it. And there's a really cool texture to it also. It's CNC on this wood. There is also a uh, G10 version with a kind of a, a wooden pattern itself. Um, so I think that that one was really popular but um, I really like this texture on this wood handle, and it reminds me a lot of saw cut uh, on traditional knives. Um, saw cut wood, I actually have a knife in saw cut wood, but it's put away in storage, so I didn't get it out for the video. Probably should have, but it, it looks like saw cut on a traditional knife to me. Um, so I'll give you an example of that on bone. Here is some saw cut bone. Again, a GEC knife. And, you know, it's the other direction here on the Civivi. But it's, uh, it's a pretty similar look. It's a little bit less uh, deep on the Civivi. But some traditional knives, some pocket knives, um, also had shallower saw cut like that. So I really like that. And I do like the wood. Like I said, there's other versions. But the wood really, you know, gives it a nice classic look to me. Now, speaking of the handle, the handle has two kind of little uh, extras here. It has a toothpick, and um, the toothpick is very, very pointy. Um, I actually stabbed this into my finger at one point on accident. Let me see if I can I can find it. Uh, no, I think, I think it's healed over, but I did actually stab this little point into my finger at one point and it it went in um, because that is very uh, acute um, very very acute and the truth is for me you know I, I know that it probably isn't going to hurt the enamel on your teeth uh, the dentist scrape away you know with basically all their strength it seems like um, with metal tools but it's just something I, I don't love using a metal toothpick um, your experience may vary, you know, uh, maybe you do. Um, and there's other uses for this probably, uh, you know, getting things out. I actually used it to clean out the, the blade well of a, a, you know, traditional pocket knife uh, at one point. So you can definitely use it, but I'm a little wary of using a metal toothpick. But then it also has a set of tweezers, a pair of tweezers. And these are useful. I find tweezers to be pretty useful. You know, whatever it is, getting some a little thing uh, off the ground, like a pocket knife screw, or, um, you know, 
pulling an errant hair or something like that. Um, I think it, it's nice to have tweezers, and it reminds me of the classic Victorinox classic, um, the the keychain Victorinox knife that has the tweezers in the handle. So I do like that. Now, one thing at one point I like poked my finger down in to get these out. I forget which one it was. It was one of them, and boy, it really kind of like stabbed up under my finger, uh, fingernail. I think that that's because I normally have my fingernails cut pretty short um, for my job. Uh, but that was definitely uh, a surprise and kind of painful. But I think that, you know, if you just use your thumbnail, you can get in there pretty easily. Um, you just get in and pull it out. So it's a nice little extra. You know, I don't think that, I think that this would be a cool knife without those, but it's a nice little extra thing. Um, moving on to the flipper, I really like this flipper, the design and the action. The action is no surprise. So Vivi makes really, really nice, you know, flipper action knives. Um, I, they're super consistent. Um, like I said at the beginning, they're just really, really consistently good in their construction. And, and it came with really nice action, um, very easy to flip, uh, very drop closed, it has ball bearings. I did have to um, tighten this. Uh, like I say, I used it and carried it a lot and I uh, tightened it and put some Loctite in the pivot screw um, and it stayed solid since then, but it came really smooth and I was able to get it back to really smooth and uh, solid really easily. But I love this inline flipper. Um, actually, it's, it's something that I've had a couple knives with this style of flipper, um, but to give you kind of a comparison as compared to just the first flipper that I grab here is a traditional back flipper. You can see it sticks out the back here. And, you know, uh, it definitely makes it a little bit less sleek in the pocket. It's going to stick out, you know, knock into your phone or whatever you carry in that pocket. It does make it have a guard, but I think that that's, you know, a positive only really on a tactical knife like that ZT. And not so much on a very EDC, you know, focus knife like the Sendi. Um, so I, I really like that it's, you know, more sleek. It keeps the lines a little bit nicer. And uh, the action is just really easy. I, I found that um, I, I uh, loaned this to a couple people to see what they thought of it. And I found that people actually took to the, being able to flip this inline flipper easier than a traditional flipper. A lot of the times when you give people a traditional flipper, they don't like break the detent hard enough and so it doesn't open the whole way. But just with how this is, there's no way to do it other really than just pulling straight down. And so I think that it's a little bit more intuitive actually. So I really like this inline flipper and it's it's something that has made me uh, think that I wanna look for more knives with what, what I'd call an inline flipper here. Um, so I really like the action. And uh, it, it's solid, it locks up solidly, no blade play, um, forward and back. And like I say, I was able to adjust it to have none side to side. And it also came with none side to side. And moving on to the blade, I really like this blade shape. It's a very classic drop point blade shape. I mean, it doesn't get a whole much, whole lot more, a uh, whole much, whole, <laughs> struggling with this hair. It doesn't get a whole lot more or much more is the two things that I was mixing together there. Um, more classic than this blade shape. And there is another blade shape that's available on some of the, the versions of this, which is more of like a spay blade. Um, so I think that that's really interesting. I think that this knife really has um, some traditional design um, inspirations, it looks like in it. And uh, I mentioned something to Ben um, on a post that I'll talk about in a second. And uh, it seems like maybe he did take uh, some inspiration from traditional pocket knives. Uh, so I love the blade shape, super practical. I like that it's black uh, coated and, and all the hardware is black. Uh, it's Nitro V, which is a steel that Civivi uses a good bit. And uh, I've had you know good experiences with it. It seems like it's heat treated real well, held an edge pretty well. I, I did sharpen it at one point. Um, you can see some of the wear that I always get when I sharpen uh, CVV knives because they have such a, a nice um, plunge line. Uh, but 
moving on to really the, my, the main thing that I'd love to see with the Sendi, which is a version with a metal bolster. And so the reason for that is because it has such a classic handle shape that looks exactly like the handle shape of a traditional Barlow. So, I mean, aside from the area for the inline flipper, those handle shapes are very, very similar. And I think it would be really cool to take the portion basically from here up, so about a third the length of the handle, which is what, you know, is kind of the, the rule of thumb for a Barlow, and give it a metal bolster. And then just have the, the handle material below that. That would be such a cool version, a cool kind of execution of a modern Barlow. Um, it's something I would really love to see. I know that um, some of Ben's knives, particularly the ones, sorry about that, the ones from Nafsco, his company, like the Lander 2 and the Lander 1, uh, are open source files for the handle covers or scales, whatever you want to call them. And uh, it'd be really cool to see that for the Ascendi so that you could make handles with a an elongated bolster and turn it into a modern Barlow or for them to just make a version like that. I think that that would be really, really cool. Um, it, it would fit the design so well, both with this draw point and with the spade blade version, uh, particularly with the wood handled version, but I think it would look great on the other handled versions, the G10 and the Micarta. Um, and I would really love to see that. Now, is it gonna happen? I think probably not. I think it would probably add a good bit of cost to have a metal bolster, but it is just something that I think would be really cool. Um, so I'd love to see that, but I wanted to give you just a couple size comparisons. Here is the Lander 2 from Nafsco, another Ben Peterson design knife. You can see it's a good bit bigger. Here is the Wii Banter, the original Ben Peterson design. Similar in length, um, but a, a much taller handle and blade and then here is a new and upcoming version of the baby banter from Civivi. love these colors blade's a little dirty from using it today but you can see that the baby banter is a little shorter and a little stouter than the sendy so i think the sendy is a great size it's a great size for edc for a lot of people um and it's one that that i really honestly liked a lot more than I was expecting. I really like this knife. I think it's a very nice little knife that could handle pretty much everything that you need in you know, most people's day to day. Has some cool extra features and has a really cool, I think traditional inspired design aesthetic. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.